call, this action is taken by calling each board member's name with the board member entering present. Mr. Murray. Present. Ms. Wilson. Present. Mr. Ms. Higginbotham. Present. Mr. Kazook. Present. And Ms. Wicker. Present. Adoption of the agenda. Ms. Wicker, I don't have anything to add or to strike from the agenda, so if there's no corrections or amendments, I recommend that the agenda be approved as presented. I make a motion to approve the agenda. I'll second it. Okay, we've come to Give the call for call. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Mr. Murray? Yes. Ms. Wilson? Yes. Ms. Higginbotham? Yes. Mr. Kazook? Yes. And Ms. Wicker? Yes. I'm so in a hurry to get to public comments. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone have anything to say? We'll have another one later on in the agenda. I know she's here for her grandson, but we do appreciate Dr. Pamela Stevens, the Dare County Superintendent, being with us this evening. Yes, we do. Russell County High School Sorority Committee Meeting. Mm -hmm. Presentation. Board members, you all might want to just kind of scoot, we'll scoot to the side. They've got a few graphics and stuff they want to show as part of the presentation. Coffee, who helped to make this possible by writing up all of the information for us to get this program at Russell County High School. We are all part, along with 40 plus, would you say 40 plus students, are part of a program called Sources of Strength. And so we are here to share. I will let each student introduce themselves um, and they will tell you a little bit more about what Sources is and what we have done and plan to do for the remainder of the year. Well, my name is Peyton Withers and I'm a junior. My name is Alexis Fox and I'm a sophomore. My name is Trey Stevens. I'm also a sophomore. I'm Jasmine Gray and I'm a sophomore. Okay. Good evening. My fellow peers and I are here represent, as a representation from an organization called Sources of Strength. We're a collective of students from Russell County High School who strive to make both our school and our community a better place. During our monthly meetings, we discuss different ways to boost the morale and spirits of students with ways like announcements, murals, kind gestures, and random acts of service that are beneficial to both our school and our community. Following myself, more members of Sources of Strength will discuss our mission statement, everything we've done thus far, and everything we have in store for the future. In Sources of Strength, our mission is to spread hope, help, and strength into every corner of our community. Our mission is to help students and staff turn to their strengths and their supports that are all around. We are connectors to help and strength. Our mission recognizes that our voice has great power and we can use it to break the silence when someone is struggling and to connect them with the help they need and deserve. We spread hope by focusing on the stories of strength rather than the stories of trauma and we know our most powerful impact comes from our personal actions, conversations, and messages that use our music, our art, our writing, our activities, our social media, our culture, and our voice. This gives life to our efforts. We are sources of strength. Additionally, in Sources of Strength, we are taught to lean, lean on and use the parts of our wheel. Those parts include family support, which are the people who support, nurture, and care for us, positive friends, which are the friends who are there when we need them, mentors, which are experienced people who help guide us and grow us into the best versions of ourselves, healthy activities, which when we feel stressed are activities that can help unwind us, lift our mood, and gain clarity along with generosity. Generosity can look a lo different in a lot of different ways, from donating money or time to being intentionally kind to other people. These acts of kindness towards others, big or small, can make an impact on how we feel about ourselves. Spirituality. Spirituality is practicing in many, practice in many ways, but at its core, we consider what gives us a, pur a purpose and connection in our spirit. Thankfulness is a profound way to practice spirituality together, no matter what our culture, heritage, or spiritual tradition. Medical access. When we are injured, we don't have to stay in pain. We can get better with access to medical care we need and deserve. 
physical and social emotional pain and often integrated and it's important to take care of our bodies, hearts, and minds. Lastly, mental health. Mental health, all, mental health is all about getting the support we need and deserve to help us when we are struggling. Our mental health is a very important part of living a healthy life and oftentimes getting together with a trusted person, a counselor, a doctor can help empower us to overcome inter internal struggles we might be facing. Good evening. As we've said, my name is Trey Stevens and to my right is Jasmine Brown. We're sophomores at Russell County High School, and during the course of this academic year, we have set out to complete the goals that my fellow students and I aim to accomplish through the Sources of Strength program. We have reached out to the community and student body at large in various avenues. When grieving the loss of a fellow student, we reached out with letters of comfort to our neighbors in Casey County. And after the tragedy that unfolded in Western Kentucky, we, when the devastating tornado swept through the region, we spoke at the WJRS telethon in support of raising funds for tornado relief. As a school, we organized a drive to collect needed supplies for those victims, specifically disinfectant wipes. As an avenue of spreading joy, we hung a joy banner in the cafeteria that allowed students and staff to, to share what gives them strength and brings them joy. We strive to start each student's day with a, on a positive note with Christmas trivia that encouraged engagement in each classroom as students aim to become the first class that morning to answer correctly and claim the prize. In the future, we plan to build on the momentum that has been started in various ways, such as a week of appreciation, appreciation for classified staff, a designated week for a school-wide cleanup, and many other opportunities to promote positivity. In closing, I thank all of you all for allowing us to come here today and tell you about the wonderful program that is Sources of Strength. touch on um, the training that they had during the summer yes. summer hours and summer yes so yes. they volunteered 40 yeah. uh, almost 50 students I believe showed up for a training that was an all-day training on their own time in the yeah. summer to learn about not only how what group are they connectors and these, these students are seriously all of them connectors they connect uh, various groups organizations clubs sports and they <coughs> they have done such an amazing job in fact just today one of the people standing up here came to me and said, we had a teacher who suffered a loss of someone and was ready to say, do you have a, do you have a sympathy card? Can we get that back? So that was something that was already done just today. So yeah. almost daily, weekly, there's somebody coming to my office saying, can we do this? Can we help with this? And it's just made them, I think, more aware of others, their suffering, and how when we focus on strength and what you can do to be there for each other, and not on the, just the trauma itself, there's a lot of healing. And then you all saw the uh, reference to the Casey County outreach, and they had uh, two students, I think it was a, within a couple within of months, a week time frame, yes. that passed away, and the uh, sources of strength, uh, they circulated cards across the whole student body, yes. and then got them to Casey County, and then the principal sent me and some others a picture, and they strung them up at the back of their cafeteria at that school just to let them know, you know, other people are thinking about you all. Um, just yeah, I actually was at a meeting, uh, a counseling meeting this week, and the Casey County High School counselor was there, and she said they ended up taking half the cards, and they sent them home with one family, and they sent half the uh, cards home with powerful. another family. And she said, and this is a testament to our kids, we had checked all the cards, of course, before we sent them, but she said they also checked every single card before they hung it up. Sure. And she said there was nothing, not one single card that was anything but wonderful and she said we might be rivals in sports and we might have a lot right. you know a lot of avenues where maybe Casey and Russell might might clash sure. but she said it when it matters that, that we're there for each other Absolutely. that's so true such great role models um, that's great. for all of them parents that's a to you all thank you and, and Miss Coffey and uh, Mrs. Davidson for your time and mentorship for these students they have grown me more than I could ever teach. Oh, you're all them. mentoring them? Uh, they, they are. Uh, they are mentoring them. They are mentoring them. Okay. They, are, they are amazing. They really are. They think of things that we never, that's why we let them leave, because they think of the best ideas. They're amazing. That's yeah. great. Well, they're the boots on the ground, right? They sure they are. are. That's great. Thank you. Thank you all Thank so you. much. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. I think we can all agree that's the good stuff. I can tell you one.
from the sources of my strength are seeing students like this do well. That's right. And they're certainly on their way. That's a great point. All right. What? I know what I've been said there. Mr. Onion. Us County oh, Education yeah. Association's Certified Employee Recognition, December 2021, Leslie McGowan. I don't see nobody that looks like them people. Dr. Bartrug, as you're walking up there, I've already told Leslie that Kobe was talking about her in such a positive way just yesterday. Perfect. Yes. Perfect so That's I'm, a good lead in, isn't it? It is. It's a I'm Brooke Bartrug. I am the local president of our Russell County Education Association. Uh, we are the Department of Education Services Division. And we Well, for the month of December, Miss um, McGowan could not be here when we did the acknowledgement on Jan January, so we're continuing hers into February. Miss um, McGowan works at Russell County Middle School, uh, sixth and seventh grade. Currently, she's teaching arts and humanities and keyboarding, uh, but she's also been a math teacher. Uh, this is her tenth tenth year teaching. She has her bachelor's of arts in uh, math and English from Lindsey Wilson College. Campbellsville University is where she obtained her Master's of Arts in Special Education as teacher leader. Her favorite parts about teaching at the middle school level is making the connections with students at such an important time in their lives. She loves watching them learn and grow into who they are, who they're meant to be, and providing them with skills and knowledge they can use now and in the future. Uh, for hobbies and activities, we asked her what she likes to do. And her husband, if you all do not know, is a pastor at Free Union Separate Baptist Church. So they're very active in the church. Um, especially with the youth group. They serve on the youth committee for the South Kentucky Separate Baptist Association. So when I ask her about hobbies, it's when she's not at school or not at church. Uh, she enjoys cooking, playing the piano, reading, and going on adventures with her family. Her favorite quote was from Jesus, Matthew 5, 16. Let your light shine before, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Such a perfect uh, quote for being an educator. So if you will come up, Leslie, we would like to present you with a $100 check just to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Miss Reed, I thought one of her hobbies were going to mention you since her husband is your pastor. <laughs> shepherding Miss Reed. That's the reason she did it. She takes all her spare time, doesn't it? Thank you. 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 Thank shines through to what you do for our students every day. And, and we have great kids in our county. And it's, I love what I do. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you. 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 Financial reports, field trips, and the treasurer's monthly monthly report for January 2022. Ms. Carnes. The treasurer's report for January 2022. Balance on hand at the beginning of the month was $9,034,029.51. Total receipts for the month were $1,877,280.61. Total of the receipts and beginning balance together was $10,911,310.12. Disbursements for the month were $2,393,115.38. And that brings the balance at the close of the month to $8,518,194.74. In fund balances for the general fund, fund one, $8,239,311.31. In special projects, fund two, negative $360,110.34. 
district activity fund 21, $7,800.64. Capital outlay fund 310, $140,952 even. FSPK building fund, fund 320, $571,301.56. Construction fund, fund 360, negative $818,858 even. Debt service fund four hundred zero dollars Food service fund fifty one seven hundred thirty four thousand six hundred sixty nine dollars and eighty seven cents. Due sherry fund fund seven thousand three thousand one hundred twenty seven dollars and seventy cents. And the total cash and bank for all funds is eight million five hundred eighteen thousand one hundred ninety four dollars and seventy four cents. And as we noted before, uh, fund two you spend it and then get it back and then. The construction will be cleared up when we get our last reimbursement on the uh, WRSI grant. So, yes, there are no changes or amendments. I recommend approval of the consent agenda items. I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda items. I'll second it. Ms. Joey? Yes. Okay. Mr. Murray? Yes. Ms. Wilson? Yes. Ms. Higginbotham? Yes. Mr. Kazoo? Yes. And Ms. Wicker? Yes. Ms. Green, is yours working okay now? Yeah. Okay. 2022-2023 tentative district staffing and SBVM allocation policy. Okay, we always have to give a tentative okay. allocation to the principals for their site based councils by March 1st. And typically, um, for instance, you'll see on the supply money, it's, it's again at $100 per pupil and then um, for the past several years after the budgets have been firmed up and we know exactly what we're dealing with, we typically, I think last year was 140 uh, yeah. off well, top. Right now, I don't think we even know what the seat No, we don't. Going to be right. the it's the budget year. Voted on the budget yeah. since the budget year, but I anticipate we'll go up to whatever that full amount is. This is just sort of the preliminary side right. of the bottom kind of thing. Um, and that is the session ends August of August. Well, we couldn't take that. Could we? <laughs> April. I'm sorry. April 15th is when the session is over. So when this is due for the final allocation to the site base councils, we'll have that final budget um, and everything um, approved by that point. So we'll be able to staff it. I mean, firm everything up with all of the um, allocations for the too much for the knowledge schools. this weekend. I'm sorry. Too much knowledge this weekend. Too much knowledge this weekend. It was a good weekend. Yep. So I recommend the approval of the tentative school staffing and budget allocations for the 22-23 school year. And again, we'll have that back uh, final one by the May 1st allocation. I'll make a motion for, to that effect. I'll second it. Okay, uh, Mr. Murray. Yes. Ms. Wilson. Yes. Ms. Sigenbotham. Yes. Mr. Kazoo. Yes. And Ms. Wicker. Yes. Coaching and youth league co coordinator positions. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we didn't have a, a good go-to list for all of our athletic positions. Um, you know, over time they've been added and and all these different things. So we worked on what we currently have with the addition of an additional coach for the baseball. That several years ago that they had that position and it was um, taken away as about ten years ago, and then. Um, if we add that back, if you all agree to add that back, then we need to add that for softball too to keep the Title IX equity. And then with volleyball, with them having freshman league or a freshman team, JV team, and the varsity team, um, they really need an additional assistant coach to manage all of that along with the youth league coordinator. So here, this lists all of the coaching positions for each sport or activity that we have in addition to the uh, positions for the youth league coordinator and as i've no noted on that asterisk this includes the additional assistant again baseball softball and volleyball and the youth league coordinator um, for volleyball that miss um, womack's been working with for that so i recommend approval of the athletic coaching and youth league coordinator positions as presented and now we would have with your all's approval we would have one go-to list and if we were to make any changes then that's the list we can go to without having a hodgepodge of yeah. throughout the years of going to clean everything that's up. Good. And I'll be honest, um, some of these positions don't get filled because 
That's there's right, just right. not people to fill. Right. Uh, you know, we have some positions right now that have, that have been left open, and other people just going to chip in. But it's um, it's it, that way we'll have one go-to list, like I said, that we can address each time that there's a request or a change. So these, it's on the list, is paid through our. Through this will all be our funding. Yes. Yeah. Yes. This okay. is this is what we allocate. Or the board allocates. I'll sorry. make a motion we approve the athletic coaching and youth league coordination for this district. I'll second it. Okay. Uh, Mr. Murray? Yes. Ms. Wilson? Yes. Ms. Higginbotham? Yes. Mr. Kazook? Yes. And Ms. Wicker? Yes. <coughs> Softball field agreement on lease. You want to kind of explain this? Is this lease forever? Is it least uh, forever uh, until probably it's? Yeah, the city of Russell Springs leased from Somerset Community College the current softball field that's used by the middle school girls. And we also have used it for other girls' softball activities yeah. over yeah. the years. For, I think what Russell Springs is wanting to do is tie it in with their existing city park and there's no money. Uh, Somerset just agreed to lease just the field and the concessions and parking to the city of Russell Springs. We thought it would be better for them to assign that to us for our purposes when we needed it, just for liability and everything else. And that's all this is. It doesn't cost us anything. We've been maintaining it for several years and we'll continue to do Okay. Mr. Hoover worked with the city on getting yeah. this agreement for us, and I appreciate that very and much. I, and I think the only real reason to do it is if someone were to get hurt and it was a middle school game or a, a youth league game that was a school activity, we would want to make sure that we had some interest in the property so that the insurance would be applicable, and that's why we're doing it. And then, like Mr. Hoover said, we've uh, yeah. mowed it since Russell Springs was sold to Somerset Community College, those softball fields, and as he noted, we'll continue to take care of the um, fields and mowing and things such as such as that. So really, the day-to-day -day operations, except for signing this paper, nobody's going to know the difference. Yeah, I, I think the main okay. thing for the city of Russell Springs, in the summertime, <clears throat> the school's out and there is no middle school games or, or school-sponsored activities they're going to utilize the field for some of their other uh, programs. Mm -hmm. When? They play at Russell Springs, they play at Jamestown, yeah. both. Yeah. This gives them an extra field. Which you can't have, a, can't have too many you fields. Too many. No, <laughs> not anymore. No, absolutely not. Play at the same time. Yeah, so I recommend approval of the assignment of lease between the City of Russell Springs and the Russell County Board of Education that's been approved by the Board Attorney. I'll make a motion that we approve the assignment of lease between the City of Russell Springs and the Russell County Board of Education that has been approved by the Board Attorney. I'll second it. Oh, sorry. We should second that. Did, did she beat you to that, Mr. Yeah, Murray? You can, yeah. He can have it. Yeah, I got a shot on her. Well, <laughs> you be quiet. Let him get the next one. I'll be okay. quiet. Mr. Murray. First come yes. first, sir. Ms. Wilson. Yes. Ms. Higginbotham. Yes. Mr. Kazook. Yes. And Ms. Wicker. Yes. <clears throat> and let's buy one of these buses and go on for tour. Yeah. yeah. I'm not going to. Kentucky Interlocal we have School six Transportation school Association Resolution for Sale of Surplus School Buses. Okay, I know you all are familiar with this. We yeah. utilized Ross Sinclair and Associates to sell our school used buses, our used um, school buses before. At this time, we have six <coughs> school buses that are no longer being used as part of our fleet. Um, age or rust issues. You can see on the inventory forms. I think there's three of the 93 uh, buses, two 96s, and an old two um, uh, bus. And um, the good thing about this is we participate in this, and it costs the school district nothing. But they take care of all the legal advertisement for the um, for the buses. Typically, it's uh, companies out of Florida that um, secure the buses and, and have the winning cost or winning bid. That may not be the case. All of these buses do run. They're just not 
they're just not worthy to be part of our student fleet anymore. You can imagine a 93 bus now, and um, we've been over the course of the past several years, you know, we've been buying two or three buses a year, and that fleet is, is getting better. So, um, again, no cost to the board. Uh, with your all's approval of this resolution, we'll send it to um, uh, Lincoln Feinert with um, Ross Sinclair, and then they'll take it from there. All the advertisement and everything is taken care of uh, with them. This does um, um, authorize me to act for and on behalf of the board in connection with the sale of the used buses, now declared, declared surplus. So, no, these are not the ones we have to destroy. They, no, they no, can, no, we've they done those. Okay. We, we have done those. That was off okay. of the uh, uh, Volkswagen settlement. Right. Mm -hmm. yes. We've got those okay. three new buses at half price, 50% right. paid for, and those have been destroyed. Chass everything cut in yeah. half and the engine board <laughs> and, the, and the proof sent. But we got those buses at half off, half okay. 50%. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. No, this That's is a, great. these are just some other ones. So I recommend that the Ruskin Board of Education adopt the attached resolution and authorize the superintendent to act for and on behalf of the board in connection with the sale of the used school buses now declared surplus property. Of course, again, the whole resolution is attached along with the bus inventory forms. They have to. They'll reject them if they don't have all the listed. Yeah. They're like this. They're OLD. I'm being quiet. I'm being quiet. I'm being quiet. I'm being quiet. I was going to say, I'll make a motion to agree <laughs> that it's recommended motion. Okay. If I get ahead of it. I'll second it. Okay. Mr. Murray? Yes. Ms. Wilson? Yes. Ms. Higginbotham? Yes. Mr. Kazoo? Yes. And Ms. Wicker? Yes. Okay. Twenty twenty two twenty twenty three dual credit memorandum of agreement between Somerset Community College skipped one. and Russell County yeah, School District. This is not something that you all have not seen before for several years. Uh, we've been offering dual okay. classes, dual credit classes with Somerset Community College, okay. and this is just their dual credit agreement for the next school year that begins in August, the 22-23 uh, school year. Uh, outlines our responsibilities as a district, and including the student responsibilities, uh, <coughs> such as you know textbooks, um, charges, classroom consumables, whatever that may, may be on some of that. Yeah. So. I'm that motion. Okay. I'll second it. I don't want to read all that. Uh, Mr. Murray? Yes. Ms. Wilson? Yes. Ms. Higginbotham? Yes. Mr. Kazoo? Yes. And Ms. Wicker? Yes. That's a really good thing. It's a fabulous thing. Oh, man. It is. Yep. They have it. Amend school year 2022-2023 calendar schedule. Okay. Uh, this is on me. As I, as I noted, um, I just failed to remember um, during the next school year, it will be our turn to host this regional swim meet. So that date in February has to be uh, accounted for in our in our calendar. And in 2023, that will be February the 3rd. So if we were going to be off that day, we needed to find another day. And I met with uh, Sue Papa Brockman and, and uh, finding uh, um, another polling location uh, for Salem Elementary School. That's the only one at this point that would be used. And um, she felt confident that um, you know over a year's time that we could go to school on May 16th because it, we would not need the, that as a polling uh, polling precinct and that could substitute for our day. So we will be off on February the third. That will be a non-student day, uh, not a work day, nothing. It just be a day off because of the, of the pure congestion out here mm -hmm. and the number of teams that participate. And we also have so many employees that have students that participate or. Um, just employees that need to work it, and then we would go to school on May the 16th. You can go to school in Kentucky on election days um, if your buildings are not used as polling places except on a presidential election year. So um, we're moving towards not having our schools used as polling places, and um, that gives us a little bit more flexibility yeah. in, the, in the calendar. So I appreciate the county clerk's office uh, meeting with me and working on that. And so th that's the only change that that would make to this calendar. We would be off on the February the 3rd, um, and then we would go on Mar uh, May the um, 16th. Yep. So I recommend approval of the revised school year 22-23 school uh, calendar and schedule with 170 instructional days and more than 1,062 hours of instruction. 
again, my apologies. That's that's all on me. Amended, you mean Amended yes. Right. Yeah. I'll make a motion yeah. okay. to that effect. I'll second. Uh, Mr. Murray? Yes. Ms. Wilson? Yes. Ms. Higginbotham? Yes. Mr. Kazoo? Yes. And Ms. Wicker? Yes. So I, I will get that out now to, um, I've already told faculty and staff, and I, I ran it by the calendar committee just to see if they had any concerns or questions about it, and they were all in agreement with it. But I will get that out to parents now because they need to know that quick because uh -huh. planning vacations and things like that. Okay. Short to school day and or week. A local board of education must approve requests for students to have a shortened school day or week. The decision is determined by, by the needs of the student. The documentation, including the board's recommendation, is then, is then submitted to the Kentucky Department of Education. As I've noted before, it's retroactive to that admissions and release um, committee meeting date. So this is for student um, S22-10. That means during this year we've had 10 students that have um, special ed students that have needed a shortened day and or school week and that we would send the necessary documentation to the Kentucky Department of Education. I'll make a motion we approve the short day week and or week. I'll say it. Okay. Mr. Murray? Yes. Ms. Wilson? Yes. Ms. Higginbotham? Yes. Mr. Kazoo? Yes. And Ms. Wicker? Yes. Fundraiser. James Elementary School um, going to have uh, T-shirts that are student designed uh, for a fundraiser March the first through the eleventh. I recommend approval Smart. of a school-wide fundraiser. Yeah. They start tomorrow. That's, That's tomorrow. right. Tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I heard you say that. That's tomorrow. Lord, Lord, February Lord. is gone, folks. Can't be days. I make a motion to approve the, the school-wide fundraiser, at Jamestown. I'll say. Okay, Mr. Murray? Yes. Ms. Wilson? Yes. Ms. Higginbotham? Yes. Mr. Kazook? Yes. And Ms. Wicker? Yes. We've got students for all kids that I have. I'll see 03-21 and 03-221. No, no, I'll skip one. I'll skip, skip one. I'll skip one. Yeah, I'll yeah. Out of state and over, overnight go. trips. Um, where go? This is listed, but as you all remember, our current policy allows approval of trips if they're in follow up from another, like uh, the first round or something like that. So the swim team is, is obviously obviously went to the um, uh, state meet the February 7th through the 19th. HOSA has the Kentucky HOSA conference in Louisville on March the 17th through the 19th. NJROTC will travel to Kings Island in the Mason, Ohio on uh, February 23rd. And then the Skills Club USA at the Lake Cumberland Area Technology Center will also be going to Kings Island, Mason, Ohio on uh, April the 29th. Um, and as, as it's noted there, the Swim Team Region 3 competition that was originally scheduled for 3rd to the 4th and it was changed um, and it was held on 5th to the 6th. So I recommend approval of out of state and or overnight trips. I'll make a motion to approve the out-of-state and or overnight trips. Second. No. Uh, Mr. Murray? Yes. Ms. Wilson? Yes. Ms. Higginbotham? Yes. Mr. Kazoo? Yes. And Ms. Wicker? Yes. I'm going to say all this again. Policy 03-21 I mean, and 03.221, second reading. Okay, um, as Ms. Wicker noted, those policies 03.21 and 03.221, they previously had their first reading. 03.21 had a first reading in July, and, and I've just missed it getting to the follow up. And the 03.221 had the first reading in October of um, 18, 2021. And we were working back with KSBA, and he'd asked me about those follow up with that. And, that's when it came to light that I failed to bring them back for a second reading. If you remember, the first one has to deal with um, hiring on classified staff, and the second one has to deal with the um, salaries for uh, classified staff to bring up in line with their current policy that we're, that we're doing, or current practices. So I recommend approval of the policies of 03.21 and 03.221, and after you all, um, pending your all's approval, we will send it back to KSBA 
and they'll uh, update our books and uh, update it online. I make a motion approve the policies of 3.21 and 3.221. Second. Okay. Uh, Mr. Murray? Yes. Ms. Wilson? Yes. Ms. Higginbotham? Yes. Mr. Kazoo? Yes. And Ms. Wicker? Yes. This is needed to be done for a long time. Here at Russell Springs? Yeah. BG2 and BG3 for Russell Springs Elementary School Security Vestibule. So you all had previously approved a BG1 for the Security Vestibule at Russell Springs Elementary School. This is the, uh, the BG2, which is the Energy Zion Criteria Form, and the BG3, the Statement of Probable Cost. As you recall, this is being paid for not about out of our general fund, but out of the state allocation of uh, state safe schools funds. And this will provide the second set of doors for Russell Springs Elementary School. Mm -hmm. So you walk in, this will be our only school that doesn't have that second layer of doors. You can be buzzed in the first one, and then if you're there for a meeting or you just need to drop off something, um, you can wait in that second one or, or whatever the situation is, and then you need to be buzzed on in. So it's, a, it's an added layer of, um, of, of protection Secure. for Russell Springs Elementary School. We've had the buzzer on that um, door for a, for a while now, um, but you know that school would never be designed that way now. You know, they go in the front door and then you're just wide open, but a lot's changed in 20 plus years than where we're at now. So this will be, um, and then your subsequent one, we will have the construction documents and advertise to receive bids on uh, your next action item. But I need approval for the BG2 and the BG3 and I'll send that back to uh, the Kentucky Department of Education. So I recommend approval of the BG2 and the BG3 for the security vestibule at Russell Springs Elementary School. I'll make that motion. It should have been done a long time ago. I'll, make, I'll second it. Uh, Mr. Murray? Yes. Ms. Wilson? Yes. Ms. Higginbotham? Yes. Mr. Kazoo? Yes. And Ms. Wicker? Yes. Russell oh, Springs Elementary done. School construction huh? documents for <laughs> submittal to Kentucky Not Department of Education and advertised to receive So the, the construction documents um, attached for the review, um, Sherman Carter Barnhart, our architect, will take care of um, all the legalities in, involved in all of that with your uh, approval. So I recommend approval of the construction documents for submittal to Kentucky Department of Education. They'll review them and then authorization to, re to advertise uh, to receive bids for the security vestibule at Russell Springs Elementary School. I'll make a motion to that effect. I don't want to drop one. This wicker just whispered in my ear. It's not the free. It's not the freezer. No, that's <laughs> what I was just getting ready to say. <laughs> that we talk so much about. We we'll put that to bed. I hope. Okay. I'll give you a second. I'll second. Okay. Uh, Mr. Murray? Yes. Ms. Wilson? Yes. Ms. Sickenbotham? Yes. Mr. Kazoo? Yes. And Ms. Wicker? Yes. Mm. After we get that okay back, then they can get started on bids and all? Yes. Yep. Yep. And then we'll need to have, um, depends on how it falls, we may need to have a special call board meeting, just timelines. Uh, as you can imagine, even this type of project, the lead time of material, is, is a long time out, but we may need to have a special call board meeting that depends on when we get that back. So sorry. I am too. Non criminal justice government entity criminal history record information user agreement. Okay, this is something that's been provided by the Kentucky School Board. Um, no, I'm sorry. This is the agreement for the non criminal justice government entity criminal history record information user agreement. I have a, a procedure on another one. Um, it's part of um, an, an, an audit that school districts are going through, and they said that everybody needs this, uh, this agreement, and it's a sharing of that information between on a criminal records check that school districts have to do on employees, and when we receive that information. For instance, we get that information, only a handful of us are allowed to see that information. Um, it's kept under lock and key, and et cetera, et cetera. So that user agreement outlines our responsibilities and um, their, their responsibilities and Mr. Guider no longer does that fingerprint for us. They all go through um, in vivo with part of an like um, got mine done. Like advantage of that it, took, it used to take us weeks to get background checks back and now since it's all online and digital we oftentimes get them back the same day oh, wow. uh, yeah, for the next morning. So this is just that agreement and then we actually have an on-site audit um, or on-site visit on March the 10th. 
from uh, the state police. On this we do, but not the procedure. Yeah, I got a, kind of got ahead of myself when I mentioned the procedure. Well, I'll make a motion to approve the non-criminal justice government entity criminal history record information user agreement that has been approved by the board attorney. Now sick. Is it Ms. Brenda? Yes. Okay. Okay, uh, Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Yes. Wilson? Yes. Ms. Higginbotham? Yes. Mr. Kazoo? Yes. And Ms. Wicker? Yes. We're done. Review of procedure 03.01 AP2521 yeah. record information. As you all know, procedures do not have to have uh, board approval, but they have to be presented to you all for review and, and any comments. So this is our procedure um, updated with KSBA. Um, the Kentucky State Police had sent us um, a sample thing, and I got with um, Mr. Thurman, our policy consultant with KSBA, and he said no other districts are doing that too, and this is what we've came up with in connection with uh, the Kentucky State Police. So this has the purpose, the authority, um, it's, it's, it's in statute KRS 160.380 that gives school districts the authority to get the background checks, uh, the agency contact, authorized personnel, the training. Several of us have already went through um, a series of, of, of training, the fingerprint card processing, um, and then <clears throat> the communication, the storage and retention, and the disposal and the, and the misuse of, 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 of the criminal record background check. So I'll take any questions or any comments or concerns you all have with that, but you don't, it doesn't require board approval. It's just our procedure on how we handle the background check. And I'll give a kudo to Ms. Janet Stearns. I think Ms. Rita will agree with me. She does an excellent job for us on um, coordinating this. Um, background check but I will and I'll just tell you right now it's going to get tough with people because now um, we can't even give like in the past we were allowed Mr. Kazoo could apply with us and he was also going to substitute maybe to Dare County if we do that we can no longer send his background check to a Dare County or even release it to him. They have to do their own. They have to do their own unless specific user agreements are in place and this separate dis uh, dissemination log. And the sample KSBA uh, policy and procedure um, does not include that. They, they suggest not doing that. But our concern with talking with the state police is we hate for people to have to pay for that again. Right. You know, to, to do that type of thing. So. <laughs> Mr. Reaver said they don't. <laughs> yeah. Right. So it's about fifty dollars, right. you know. Now. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it sounds like. And the state police officer has also been just fabulous on working through this. I mean, he's so responsible and just gets right back with us. So there's several things that that will change on what we're doing with that. You all have any questions or anything with that? We went round and round with it, haven't we, Mrs. Volz? Let me go ahead and do the personnel We've reports. Done all that. Yeah, personnel Page reports. Yes. Okay. Uh, Tammy Maynard, resignation, Tammy Jamestown Maynard. instructional oh. assistant. We wish her well of taking care of some grandbabies. Um, Tina West, res resignation of Jamestown instructional uh, assistant. Um, wish her well too. And Amanda Burchett, um, she went ahead. She was going to leave at the end of the year, but she's got a, a another job offer in her home county, uh, another line of work, and so she's went ahead and and put in her resignation and we appreciate the, her service to our students. Ms. Brittany Blakey has been hired in that position as the Jamestown second grade teacher. Margaret Coomer hired at Bill Springs Elementary School um, uh, instructional assistant. Ashley Coppage is another um, employee that's got another job and we wish her well a resignation. Jacqueline Pike has been hired Russell Springs Elementary School instructional assistant. Uh, Jenny Minix hired Salem Elementary School uh, instructional assistant. Mike Scott will serve as interim with Russell County Middle School uh, softball coach. Lucas Ford hired Russell County Middle School um, exceptional education teacher. He's also, of course, as you all know, our football coach. Uh, Melinda Wilson hired Russell County High School instructional assistant. Scott Jones, um, resignation for the Russell County High School softball coach. Tanya Rexrod is interim Russell County High School softball coach. Lisa Hart, and we wish her well, um, retired as Russ County High School Employment Specialist. Dustin Carroll, hired from standby to full-time bus driver. And the following um, have completed uh, bus driver training and um, are now eligible to be substitutes. Kevin Kemp, 
Charlie Anderson, Matt Brown, David Delk, and Melinda Wilson, and, and Brittany Ginn. Um, so we appreciate that. Uh, Teresa Meyer hired as district substitute teacher, and Caitlin McQuarrie, district itinerant speech and language pathologist, and Kaylee Covey, Covey uh, as district substitute teacher. Is that uh, Charlie Anderson? That's, is that Stacy? No, we yeah. have two. He's retired. We previously he retired had last year. Thank you for coming. That's the, yeah. the thankfully oh, will be good. probably the best we've been in years of serving students. We have subs or I think we've brought in I'm with that. Yeah. I'm close to Public comment. I do want to make notes here on the public comment. I was going to mention the first. We're really excited. The high school is starting a teacher ed pathway. Appreciate Mrs. Vole. She's been working hard on that. Appreciate Lindsay Wilson College. They're going to partner with us on that so we can help grow our own. And we'll have um, a number of students that will start taking these classes. And then as they advance on, they'll have dual credit classes in education offered to them through um, uh, Lindsay Wilson College. And so we're just really, there's a club that goes along with it. Um, the high school is excited. Just a lot of, um, just a lot of excitement for that pathway of, of trying to grow our own teachers. Ms. Ray, did you have anything to no. add on that? Okay. I have a public comment. While you guys, while you guys are checking the doors in um, Muscle Springs, the south door going out of the gym, that thing is tough to shut. I mean, you have to really stand. I can see your building actually start to shut. Yeah, the, um, so while those guys are there, yeah, there's a sign on that door to pull it hard. Oh, yeah, you got, we got yeah. because other kids can do it. I yeah. actually, I yeah. check those doors and other doors will leave. Yeah. We've it's talked about that before, Mr. Birds. The, the frame has put the pressure on Yeah, on you that. see it. I was yeah. looking at that yeah. last year when I was coaching yeah. last year. Um, yeah, we've really actually good. got Atlas. That's a good point. We've got Atlas Metal coming to um, replace a couple of doors at the high school. Um, I will have maintenance director to check on that door while yeah, they're here. Look at it. Yeah. I look for the cost. You know, you might not have to replace that door to really start looking. It looks like the building was shipping just a tad bit. It's a little bit. Yeah. And I have one more question. I've been out knocking on doors. I've had parents ask me about the $75 parking fee for the students and where that money goes. And if everybody pays for that. The what parking fee? $75 parking it's fee. It's not a $75 parking fee. That's it's what I'm saying. Mr. Cherry, 25 I think. It's 25 Yeah. Oh, that's that's for 100 years. Never, yeah, it's not $75 okay. parking fee. No, no it's $25. Oh, Lord, is it right up? Uh, no, it's, it's $25, and that goes back into doing student activity funds okay. accounts. Yeah. When you collect money from students, it has to go back to student activity funds. You can't take um, student collected money and buy, buy a textbook, for example. That's not allowed. Now, is that everybody pays for that? Like, uh, Drivers. Well, I, well, I mean, as in all, every staffing, too. The no, teachers. staffing is not paid. If you're sitting well, that was the big complaint I was having. Pardon me. Why don't be no way Because they don't have to drive. Because they don't have to drive. There's buses available. Yeah, so. Yeah, I know, but I've never asked about the bounds of teachers. They've asked me questions. Does teachers pay for the No, no, teachers. Staff do not pay. I said, well, I go to the meetings. I saw I asked this time. I go in there, so I can get back with the and it actually works for, for security purposes also okay. because those, those uh, vehicles are attached to that student. Mm -hmm. We can roll in there and get that uh, parking space. And, you know, parking okay. space. We can see who's driving okay. that vehicle. Right. There's a little bit of a, uh, we gain a little bit of that just knowing who's parked here, who's there, oh. or whatever. And, of course, and we're flexible with that too. If, they, if the car's been broke down and they need to drive a different vehicle, we're not looking for that. No, I know Mr. Grider's worked with some kiddos that had some yes. financial. Yeah, that, that just uh, has a strong with that. that. Sure, he's good to work with that too. But Mr. Birch, if a kid has asked for seventy-five dollars for the parking well, fee, they pocketed fifty. <laughs> <laughs> are, are you sure? <laughs> you know, well, I got a little bit. Yeah. Funny, I, I never heard of that. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty bad. They wouldn't be many driving. It's well, just, that's what you I thought. Got a racket going in. Yeah. So what are we using yeah. for this thing? Yeah. I said, I've never heard of that. I said, I've never heard of that. I've never heard of that. I've never heard of that. But it goes to the student account. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I figured. That's what I said. I said, I've got this week right back in the summer. You can't. 
Yeah. That's the correct way to say that word. That is just fine. I know. Yeah. 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 Everybody start pulling masks off. They're going to have to do something. Yeah, these when these they're truck part, drivers. Them, yeah. I think everybody got scared and they start pulling masks off. These truck drivers and start pulling masks off all the kids. Before I forget, Miss Dale, what's happening in this room next month? Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. There, there's a meeting being held in this room next month, the Farm Bureau one, so we'll just meet in the auditorium, which is fine because we just approved to meet in the ANC, so we don't specify room. What about, what about the mask at the, at the technology center? We can't do anything about that, but I've talked to Ms. Roy. She, she expects it very soon. They've sent out a thing from the personnel cabinet, and um, they're just, her boss sent out an email. She shared it with me today. They're very close. Ms. Joy was asking about the mask at the ATC, but as of right now, it's still in effect, but it should be gone just really, really soon. Good. Yeah. Okay. You done? I make the motion with Jerry. They're not here. Brenda's already made the motion. Yep, I think it's Y'all want to talk and wait till we get done. <laughs> All in favor? Y'all in favor going home? Yeah. Uh, I am. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.